Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I'm going to be showing you a technique for your 10 minute mixed media techniques and this is using your existing embossing folders. This is a really fun look and it's a great way to stretch the stash you already have. Now here's my collection of technique tags that we've already been creating during the mixed media 10 minute technique series. You can go back and see a video on each and every one of these and I'll make sure the playlist is linked just up here for you. There's also an introduction video introducing you to the series and letting you know exactly what we're going to be doing throughout all of the videos and everyone is welcome okay so for this technique as I say we're going to be using our embossing folders now I've got two tags here because I'm going to try out two different embossing folders with you for different colors and different styles you can use absolutely anything you have at home you will get different results from 3d embossing folders you'll get different results if you've got different sized embossing folders depending on what the pattern is so I'm going to be using two one of them is actually quite looks like quite a heavy pattern and I think I'm going to also use this one which is the opposite it's actually quite a fine pattern and I'm, what I'm going to do is on my tag I'm going to do both the front and the reverse of each so within an embossing folder as you probably know if you've got some laying around at home you do have two sides to it so depending on which way you emboss which way you put your cardstock usually and run it through your machine you'll get a different look so we're going to be using these almost as stamps now this one's still a bit damp because I have been playing around with it because I actually really loved the effect that this gave but we'll get to that in a moment Let's start first of all. Now this is actually a cut and emboss folder. So this one does have some dies in it, but that doesn't affect what we're going to be doing. We're not using a machine for this, we're just using our hands. So for this one, I'm going to be working on the side of the embossing folder that's got the raised parts. So if we just take a closer look at this, hopefully you can see that this has got raised areas in it. And if I bring you to the other side of this folder, Hopefully you can make out that we've actually got the uh, design there in black is dipped down, so that's debossed. So we are working on effectively the reverse of the design, and you'll find this with most embossing folds. We want to work on the reverse first, then try the other side, definitely, just for fun. Now for this technique, really you want to be working with a water-based ink. You don't want to use anything that's going to just stick to your, your embossing folder and not come off, so something quite... Um, ideally water reactive and I'll show you why in a moment so I'm going to start with distress oxide you can try the inks as well but I find the oxides because they have a dye and a pigment in them the pigment kind of holds onto the plastic a little bit better doesn't bead quite as much as an oxide does, as sorry as an ink does and when I apply this now usually on a stamp we will tap down but let's take a closer look at this and you'll see that we're really not getting an even coverage at all. So for this reason, with my ink pads on embossing folders, I do tend to do the swiping motion first and make sure that every area is covered. And then I'll go back afterwards and I'll just gently tap to kind of just eliminate any of those swipe marks. But knowing that every area of my embossing folder has got some ink on it. So once that's covered, just a very light spritz of water here. And the more water you use, the more of a distressed look you're going to get. Now, don't expect perfect stamping from this. We're not stamping with a rubber stamp or anything quite as precise, but we are going to get a really beautiful look. So onto my tag, which is the watercolour paper. I'm going to go straight in the middle here. So I will have a bit of a border and I'm going to press that down. Now, as I say, with that water, you are going to get a little bit of pooling a little bit of distress there but it is such a beautiful effect so I'm just holding that down letting the ink and the water soak into the paper just for a moment and then let's lift that up and you can see we've got a really lovely pattern now you can leave that as it is if you want to or you can spritz it with some water just very lightly even more to distress that image just a little bit further and I would just do small amounts of water at a time personally I prefer to go um, around the edge more especially when I've got something like this so if the edge is not quite reaching the edge of my cardstock or my page my project 
I'll go around the edge just like we did near the beginning. I think it was the first video. I'll link that up here for you because we spritz the edge with water to allow that to kind of fade and blend out into nothing and we're doing very similar here. Now as we did that time the water is or rather the tag sorry the water is causing the tag to curl up so I'm just going to hold that down with my um, tweezers here just something like a pokey tool is fine and I'm going to allow that to dry or of course you can heat set that. So that's now dry and it's so pretty I've got a few wet spots there but I'm actually going to go back over this so in my folder I'm going to use a piece of kitchen towel just to wipe off the excess ink and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go around the edge this time with a darker shade. Now I'm going a lot darker, I'm going to go in with my um, ground espresso ink. This is a dark brown, again it's within the same family, the Distress Oxide inks and I'm just going to blot that just in the centre there to fade that out and also course just wipe any excess of the plastic that you've got on there that you don't want and I've got a little bit in the, this bottom corner I didn't quite capture so just making sure that I've got all the edges here I'm going to sort of try to achieve a vignette look with this we'll just wipe that excess off there now perfect okay now once again I will do a light spritz of water until I can see that I'm kind of just starting to pull on the surface and it's a little bit harder this time if your paper has just warped slightly but just find one area that you can sort of just look at and think yep yeah, okay that's lined up with where I went last time so I'm just going to concentrate on this as well at the bottom here and press that down making sure it goes down in the same place as it did last time now already you can see through there I'm getting that pooling that bubbling so it's not a perfectly flat image but I don't want that I want the distressed look so again lift that up and we have got this beautiful outside vignette to the blue we can still see the blue through there I'm just dabbing away the excess because that was quite dark ideally just use a darker colour but I am going to go back in with my water spray and do the same just around the edge just to blend any out that I can now as pretty as that is, what you'll often find is the other side of the folder actually also gives you some really fun effects. So I'm going to repeat the process exactly the same on the reverse. I don't mind that I've got a few bits of ink on there, that's fine. And I'm going to see what the result is. Now because we've already done this once, I'm going to speed this part up for you. So there we've got the negative image of the first one. This is definitely more defined. There's more detail to that one. I spritzed quite a lot of water around this one and used a darker edge to it. So uh, it was actually a darker blue uh, rather than the brown this time. Um, spritzed the edge so that it's stretched out because of course it didn't quite fill with my paper. And I love that we've got that pattern in there but it's still quite loose and flowing. It's really pretty if you need to make your own pattern papers for example, especially for their smaller pieces, this is going to be the perfect technique. Now as I said to you I am going to use two folders, I'm also going to look at this one because this one is a bit of an odd shape, you think well that wouldn't really impress much at all but as we've just learned you can use the reverse. So I'm actually going to open this up and rather than using the raised areas of the folder that are smaller I'm actually going to go and use the back edge so well this is actually the front when you're bossing through a uh, machine so this is the one with the black lines on um, but this has much more space for you to add your ink to much more of an area and uh, it will give you a much bolder design so let's go some, with some brighter colours this time too so this time I'm going to go with um, Abandoned Coral I'm sticking with my Distress Inks and Oxides I'm going to go Abandoned Coral in the two top corners there so I'm doing the swiping and then the dabbing making sure there's plenty of ink on there you don't want so much ink and water that it seeps into the design on the embossing folder and then of course it kind of like falls into your paper anyway because you're going to lose the definition so just swiping that on making sure I've got it all and then I will do a spritz so this should make a nice orange between as well but just lightly spritz all over and let's take this to our paper so I'm going to just quickly flip that over 
and press this in just like so. And I'm really excited to see this one because I know it's a large surface area so there's lots of ink on there and I'm really hoping that the lines in there are going to be quite defined um, and left obviously white blank so that we can see exactly what we've got. Oh look at that, perfect. How brilliant is that? That is almost as if it's been um, heat embossed with a resist. So I'm just going to push this down with my tweezers. I don't want the ink to run so that, that that kind of distorts the image. And I'm going to dry this. I'm not going to add any more water to this one. So looking more closely at this, you can see where you get that pooling on the uh, plastic. It gives a fantastic result, a bit of a distressed image there. I really love the effect, especially for your art journals, for example, and all of your mixed media different projects. So there's something a little bit different that you can try on your technique tags with embossing folders that you have at home. So rather than stamping, try stamping with those instead. Let me know the results. Make sure you post photos of these tags that you're creating along with the series in the Facebook group. That's all linked in the description below. Anyone is welcome to join if you are playing along with the technique tags and trying out all these new 10 minute mixed media techniques. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I'll see you again very soon with a new technique.